Hello, um, it, it is an honor for me to have the privilege of speaking with you and, um, or of you watching, listening to, um, uh, my YouTube, uh, videos that God and I really like, he, he, he's my inspiration. Eh? He, like that's the best way I can put it. And I, I have the night off, thank God, uh, due to rain. And, uh, so my days off, uh, starting tomorrow morning, uh, I just had an extra night of sleep added to, um, those days off. Kind of glad about that. And, um, and I, I have been pondering, uh, as I beat the, the trail in, uh, in, in a haul truck in the mine and, uh, and I was pondering what, uh, what would the next video subject matter be? And I, uh, got it and God gave it to me in that he, God, caused me to remember a time uh, back in 1981, possibly 81, 1980. And, um, and I um, just had the privilege of working with a young man whose whole family uh, we're very strong in a denominational church, and that's fine. They chose to believe in God, uh, in Jesus Christ, and so on and so on. But I had three days of an opportunity to work with that young man. He would be about 28 or 30 at the time, I think. And I, I really wasn't that much more. Um, but, but anyways, um, when I would go to work back then and now, uh, and every point in between, I would always ask God, is there anything that I can say to this person? Only once did God tell me that he did not wish to speak to a fellow that I was working with. He said that he, God, had nothing to say to him. And, and I was shocked. And so... Mm, um, I asked the guy, I said, you know, I asked God what I should speak with you about today. And God says that he has absolutely nothing to say to you. The guy uh, was of Indian, um, India, uh, uh, very uh, almost purplish colored in skin. Nice guy. I liked him. I even remember his first name and, of course, his last name as well. But um, he turned ashen. He, he, blessed, turned white is what I'm saying. I said, man, what did you ever do to God that he does not have anything to say to you? I, I heard uh, from his dad a few years later that along about that time, um, that young man had a heart change and, and whatever he did, he did. But I know why he did it, because God had nothing to say to him. Okay, let's go and I'll try to, uh, try to uh, have some continuity here. Eh? I'm, I'm no public speaker. I'm Irish, so I, I speak, uh, but hey, uh, you understand that. Okay, I'm a retired rancher. Them some breaks. That's, that's where it's at. I spent three days with this young man working in a giant house. Uh, this is in Eritrea. He, this is not the young man from India. Okay, hang in there with me. And, uh, and, um, that young man, uh, I asked God, I said, what do I talk with this young man about? And God and I went to work on that young man for three straight days. He was doing wallpaper high end, and I was doing stain and lacquer 
high end on a big house. And, uh, and, and so I, I spent three days working my buns off always, but quite often I, I would have plenty of time to think because a hey, staining and lacquering, it's not rocket science. Okay. Okay. I don't think paper hanging is either, but nonetheless. So I posed every subject for that young man that God laid on my heart. And his answer was the same. I don't believe in God. I'm not interested in God. I asked him at one point, uh, about the third day, I was getting real frustrated. Day, eh? like I'm, I'm, I'm not used to drilling for water and not hitting pretty, pretty quickly. I, I asked him. I said, and he knew me for ever since I moved to Alberta, and uh, I said, um, do you know anyone who is truly a true, true? Christian. He said, no, I don't. And he says further, I, I don't choose to believe in God. I reject God. I reject that. So I had spent all this time trying to evoke some opportunity to lead him to uh, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And it was not floating children. It was not working. And, uh, then he said, I know one Christian. He said, he is my brother uh, in uh, the city to the north of where we were at in Airdrie. And uh, he said, he's a Christian. He said, he's my brother. Only one in his family. Well, the only one he knew, including me didn't count me as a Christian. Hey, I've been counted out before. It's all right. I don't mind. Okay. I don't care what people say, count me out or count me in. It's God that matters. And uh, he said, that man, that brother of mine, my older brother, he's a preacher and he is a true believer in God. I said, well, what does that do? He said, nothing. He, he said, nothing. He said, because that's one man, one man of all the hundreds and hundreds and more probably thousands of people that he knew, one person lived their life out correctly as a Christian, as a believer, one. I thought, oh, so much for my ego. Self-esteem's in the toilet. And I thought, forget that nonsense. That's drivel. So I said, God, I said, uh, we've been working with this dude now for three days. He's he's done today. He's moving on. This is my last kick at the cat. I said, I've, I've said everything that I could say to prove to that young man that you, God, are real. God said, um, he doesn't believe in me, does he? I said, no, he doesn't. Not a lick. He should. But not a lick. Um, God said, uh, want to uh, approach this from a, a different direction? I said, God, here. I'm. I, that's it. I'm ready. Let's go. You tell me. I'll you, you, you just point this old Irishman. I wasn't old back then. I was quite young. And, uh, but I said, you, you, you point this Irish dude, uh, me in the right direction and I'll, I'll walk in it. Okay. If not, uh, trot up the trail a bit. This is a proof of God's existence. It's not just in the statement, but it's in the ramifications of the statement. God said, uh, so he refuses to believe in me? I said, yes. He said, ask him, has he ever 
no one, anyone who was truly evil. I thought, oh, dear God, you're brilliant. <laughs> I mean, you're brilliant. Because in our life, we see opposites, good, evil, love, hate, all these things. And so I, I said, hey, I can't touch his heart. Holy Spirit, I know what's working overtime. God and I, we were, we were on our game plan. We were there to save that young man from an, an eternity separated from God. That's, that's what I've done most of my life, except when I was screwing up myself. Nonetheless, I've done that a bit. Um, I asked him, I said, so you have never known anyone who is uh, truly a believer except for your brother. I said, have you ever known anyone who is truly evil? He said, oh, Jim, oh, Jim, yes. He said, I was laying on the floor in New York City in a laundromat. And a guy walked in off the street and he said, Jim, I was so out of it. Let's say, okay. He said, I could not move. And that man got down beside me and he realized that, that the dude on the floor was unable to move because of his behavior and so on like that. I'm sure you're with me on that. We won't have to go there. And um, he said, Jim, that man started in and he told me everything that he was going to do to me and to my body and he said, Jim, I couldn't do anything. He said, Jim, that man was truly, truly evil. Well, going along with the idea of opposites, that man in that laundromat, laundromat in New York City was evil. And that scared the young man who was unable to move because of what he had been doing. And it impacted him. He said, I know there's evil. Well, if there's evil, then there is the opposite, which is good, which is God. Get it with me? Proof. You say, well, that's one circumstance. No, sorry, no. How many people in this world choose to believe in God compared to how many people in this world who choose to believe in evil? Satan is a fulfillment of evil. Hey, the United States of America isn't the great Satan, okay? They may behave badly, but... They're not the great Satan, okay? And Israel isn't the little Satan either. You know, they, they're God's chosen people. God said, you bless Israel, I'll bless you. You curse Israel, I'll curse you. So that young man and I had a decent talk about how many millions and millions and millions of people who believe in Satan and how many believe in God, and thus in that very simplistic way of looking at things, unless you yourself are narcissistic, is pretty good proof. In, in the Old Testament, it said, uh, uh, if uh, there are two witnesses uh, that someone has done something wrong in court, uh, their word will be taken Two witnesses will be taken ahead of the person who is being charged. Okay, let's just look at this world. 
I purport, I put forth the idea that God is the creator, that Jesus Christ is his son, that Jesus the Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, for mine. Killed. Rose from the dead on the third day, sits at the right hand of God the Father. Now, let's take another look at those people who validate God's very existence by their very hatred, not just talking to anti-Semites now, okay? But we're talking about people who have dedicated their lives to worshiping Satan. So I choose to worship God. Think of the millions and millions. I dare say, I dare say there are more people in the world who worship Satan than there are who worship God. Because God said, um, oh, there's a scripture about the broad and the narrow way, so on. Oh, dear Lord God in heaven. Hey, I can't remember squat. Okay, so it's not because I'm not young. I couldn't remember much when I was young. It's the way it is. So, you have this vast resource of proof from the people who choose to believe in Satan instead of God. But wake up. Opposite. God, Satan, you believe in Satan and demons, evil spirits, all that stuff. Hey, I'm very familiar with that endeavor. Um, never liked casting demons out, okay? It just was not a fun job. Done it, but didn't like it. Okay. You have a world with two opinions. Well, there's another one. It's called agnostic, uh, atheist, whatever. They don't believe in anything except they're concerned about oh, what if they're wrong. But anyways, so you have those who worship Satan, those who worship God, they actually validate the existence of whom they worship. God's very existence um, and the acceptation of that According to scripture, God made Satan in order to give you and I an option, an opportunity to choose between good and evil. You worship Satan? Uh, it's your choice. It's your choice. But realize in your choosing <clears throat> Satan, you are bypassing, negating, setting aside the potential life in God, in Christ. So, uh, nothing happened. That young man and I, well, he, uh, uh, God and I got his attention, eh, uh, with the question about have you ever uh, met anyone who is truly evil, which indicate that it would indicate and does indicate that there is an opposite, love, hate, good, evil, that sort of stuff. He just kind of looked at me. He didn't say much, eh? But about 10 years later, that young man called me and said, Jim, I want you to know, I had hardly ever seen him since. He said, I want you to know that I have gotten my heart straight, right with God. He had gotten married. And he was at peace with God because of the proof as to the existence of God in the existence of evil, Satan. That man in New York City who was going to do all sorts of not good things to him. So here, um, I'm not sure if this will help you. But I'm telling you this, this is probably the best proof I've ever heard. Um, hey, not because I said it, because God told me, God told me. 
what to say. I listened. I said, it's the way it is. Not my fault. It's not, not, not my benefit either. God has a purpose. He's going to get her done, whether you like it or not. But you are the only one who will determine where you spend eternity. You are the only one who will decide uh, what, who and what you believe in. You'll, you'll choose. You walk in it. Hey, you will get your wish. You want to be at peace with God? Humble yourself and pray and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you. You want to live a life of, uh, the word is debauchery, okay? I've never seen it much, but I, I did learn in the Webster's what that means. You have the choice between God and Satan. You also have the proof as to both their existences. So you choose. Hey, you choose. You want to choose something that has a promise of life, hope, peace, joy, longevity, in eternity forever with God and Jesus in heaven? Then you humble yourself and pray and ask God to forgive you. You want to go straight to hell? Keep walking the way you are. Hey, Satan, uh, be glad to, to, to drag you down, okay? That's his job. Rob, steal, and destroy. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the privilege and the honor. And I thank God that he caused me to remember that story from 19, it may have been 1980 or 1981. And oh, dear God in heaven, that young man got his heart right with God, not by looking at God for proof of his existence. But that young man got his heart right with God by looking at Satan and having seen the proof of Satan's existence. And thus, God being the opposite of Satan, that young man humbled himself and prayed. And the last I heard, he was still at peace with God. I hope he is. I hope you take time to think about uh, the proof of God's existence and think about the corresponding truth, the proof of Satan's evilness. God is love. Choose ye whom you will serve. And you serve. God bless you. Y'all take care now. First video back after uh, five nights of working. And uh, boy, did I have fun. Okay, God bless. Y'all take care now. Bye-bye.